The characters that you find on your keyboard are mostly taken from the old 1960s uh, seven bit ASCII character set. And that is a very small character set. It has only 94 graphic characters, which I've shown here. And these characters were taken, were chosen by the standards committee uh, to cover essentially the repertoire that you could find on the keyboards of American typewriters or teletype printers. And then when they filled the code table, they had a small number of positions left and they added a couple of symbols that the committee thought would be useful for programming languages, mostly uh, brackets and braces, uh, underscores for use in variable names, and quite peculiar, the backslash that hadn't existed before. Uh, someone thought that you could combine the uh, slash and the backslash into a V-shaped or inverted V-shaped a symbol for logical and and logical not. But because it's such an unusual and exotic uh, character that's not used anywhere else, it became very popular as a meta character, for example, here in order to start uh, tech macros. Um, <clears throat> book typesetters instead have used a much, much larger repertoire of typographic characters and uh, Tech defines a number of shortcuts and macros to allow you to access these larger set of typographic characters that you still can't find on a typical PC keyboard. If you look at your keyboard, uh, what non-ASCII characters can you actually find there? If you have a, a British keyboard, I believe the only non-ASCII character that you will find will be the pound sign. And uh, somewhat unusually, there are two more characters hidden in the uh, top left corner. There's a logical not character, which I think is very rarely used, and uh, even more exotic, a broken vertical bar character. Uh, again, I would be interested in the story of how these actually ended up on the British keyboard standard. Um, today, uh, computers use an extended character set called uh, Unicode or ISO 10646. It starts in its first 128 code position with the traditional ASCII table. Then it adds another 128 characters that are um, known as an extension known as Latin 1 that adds uh, some additional typographic characters and uh, European uh, letters with diacritical marks. Um, but then it adds thousands of other characters. And for example, in the hexadecimal 2000 range, you can find, for example, a number of different dashes. You can find different types of opening and closing curly quotation marks. And so we're looking a bit at how are these used in typography and how can you access them if you can't find them on your keyboard. Um, in book type setting, finite typography, uh, we distinguish actually between four different types of hyphens or dashes, whereas on an ASCII keyboard, you will find just one single character that's today known as the hyphen minus character. It's a sort of typewriter compromise uh, between the functions of these uh, different dash-like characters. The First of these, the proper hyphen, is the character that's used whenever you separate two words or you split a word across a line break. So this here is, for example, a hyphen in the word line break here. And that is what you get if you just type the hyphen minus key on your keyboard in LaTeX. The N dash is a little bit longer. In fact, the, the length of that character is known among font designers as 1n. It's often roughly the width of a letter n. And it is used in particular in British typography as a replacement for either the word to or the word and. So if you have a range of numbers, pages 64 to 128, 
then it's customary to use not a hyphen but an n dash here. Also, if you have uh, two names joined together, the Rally Paris Dakar or the London Paris train, uh, the hyphen, the, the dash in there is a, a shortcut for the word end. And again, you would use an n dash there. The m dash is an even longer version, is rarely used in uh, British typography, but it can be used as a punctuation dash if you have some interjection in the middle of a sentence. In British typography, you would use a space, an n dash, and a space as a punctuation dash. Uh, in US typography, it's also customary to use an m dash without spaces around it. And the fourth dash like operator is the minus a mathematical operator and the shape of the minus has to match the shape of the plus sign. It's just the vertical component of the plus sign. And if you put a plus sign next to these uh, three other hyphens or dashes, you will see the hyphen is much, much shorter than a minus. An n dash is a close approximation of a minus, but not quite. It's often thicker because it tries to match the stroke weakness. Uh, thickness uh, inside the font, whereas a plus as a mathematical operator is often done in a, uh, in a narrower stroke width. The m dash is much too long and only if you actually use the minus sign it correctly matches the plus sign. How do you get all of these in uh, Tech? Uh, a single hyphen gives you a hyphen, a double hyphen automatically is converted into an n dash, a triple hyphen is automatically converted in an, into an m dash. And if you use the hyphen minus key inside mathematics mode, then you will automatically go get a minus instead of a hyphen. Similar story with quotation marks uh, on typewriters and in ASCII, you have only two types of quotation mark, namely a unidirectional either single quotation mark or a double quotation mark, but there's no distinction between whether it's an opening or a closing uh, quotation marks. But typesetters use instead curly quotation marks that have a direction. So the closing curly quotation marks looks a bit like a figure nine and the opening quotation mark looks like an upside down uh, figure nine. And again, there is a single and a double version of these. And <clears throat> there other similar characters um, uh, that look a little bit like quotation marks. So how do you get these in uh, LaTeX? You will find on your keyboard the single quotation mark uh, character and uh, that will give you the right or closing single quotation mark. Whereas you will also find on your keyboard a accent graph uh, character an accent, a French accent that normally goes on top of a character rather uselessly on the keyboard. It exists just on its own, but that is converted by Tech inver internally into a left quotation mark. If you duplicate either the graph accent or the single quotation mark, you get the left double quote or the right double quote. If you use the single quotation mark in mathematics mode, you get instead the prime character which is commonly used, for example, to uh, denote the derivative of a function f and f prime, or just a variant of a variable x and x prime. And again, you can uh, use it several times and you can have a, a double prime and a triple prime version of a variable. If you want to put a acute or graph accent on top of a letter, for example, in uh, to typeset French words, uh, there are also a single symbol macros that put a accent onto the next letter. Uh, so here, a uh, single quote and graph accent. In some older terminal fonts, today more rarely, but sometimes you still encounter them, uh, the ASCII characters for the graph accent and the uh, single vertical uh, quotation mark are uh, designed slightly differently in a 
kind of compromise shape that looks a little bit like either opening or closing quotation marks or the acute and graph accents. So what exactly these look like on your keyboard can vary a bit. If you want to uh, access any non-ASCII symbols, for example, to typeset other uh, European languages. There exists some, uh, there exists first of all a ligature mechanism in uh, Tech where the font can state that certain combinations of characters are actually represented by a different glyph. This is sort of the, the graphical version of a character that actually gets imprinted on, on the paper. That's commonly used for ligatures such as FL or FI, which may look a little bit uh, strange if the dot of the I collides with the F and therefore many fonts contain a combined FI where the uh, bow of the, the arc of the uh, F ends in the, in the dot on the I. And uh, the uh, Spanish inverted exclamation mark and uh, question mark are also implemented as such uh, ligatures. So if you want to get these symbols, you just type uh, exclamation mark, question mark, followed by a graph accent, and the font will automatically replace these. There are a couple of other macros for uh, Scandinavian diacritical characters, uh, Polish V, uh, German sharp S, uh, the paragraph sign, the pilcrow sign, the dagger, the double dagger, the copyright sign, and the pound sign. If you have some of these on your keyboard, for example, a British pound sign on the keyboard, uh, they will normally be added these days in the UTF-8 encoding of Unicode to a file. And if you, uh, LaTeX by default does not understand UTF-8, but there exists an input encoding, input enc package. And if you call it with the UTF-8 uh, attribute, uh, then, um, uh, many UTF-8 characters will be understood by LaTeX directly. And like on the previous slide, there exist, in addition to the macros for adding an acute and a graph accent to the next character, lots and lots of other combining characters. And finally, um, there's also a peculiarity about how spaces are uh, typeset in Tech. Uh, in traditional English book typesetting, it's customary that the typesetter puts a slightly larger space at the end of a sentence. And Tech has a built-in heuristic uh, for automatically detecting where the end of a sentence is. And that works quite often, but not always. And if you have a keen eye on typography, you may see that some tech beginners uh, don't compensate uh, for where this heuristic goes wrong or just switch off the mechanism entirely and then you see after some full stops oddly large spaces. The heuristic is that tech believes that any space after a period terminates a sentence unless that period is preceded by an uppercase letter in which case uh, tech assumes that uh, the period is terminating an abbreviation and not a sentence. And if there are any parentheses between the uh, previous letter and the uh, period, they are ignored. And that often works. So I've deliberately stretched a test sentence here a little bit. If I uh, write uh, JF Kennedy's US budget, look, you can see that all these full stops here, all these periods follow a uppercase letter which are not end of sentence periods because these are uh, abbreviations. Whereas if it follows a lowercase letter, you get this much bigger uh, space here, enormously exaggerated in order to indicate this is the end of the sentence. But of course, it's not difficult to uh, construct a counter example. Uh, there are abbreviations like EG, uh, where a period uh, follows a lowercase letter. Uh, an abbreviation such as here NASA may f occur at the end of a sentence. Uh, doctor is another common uh, contraction which in British English isn't actually followed by a full stop because it's not an abbreviation, it's a contraction where you 
drop all the letters in the middle of the word um, but in uh, some other regions uh, these are commonly also followed by a period and that's accidentally uh, misrepresented here as an end of sentence uh, al is also something you can find quite often in literature references and this is not the end of the sentence so you can override the heuristic by uh, using for example the tilde character uh, play um, the doctor in front of a name for example would anyway be a bad place to put a uh, to put a line break and therefore um, we use here the no break character at other places you can use bachelor space to explicitly force this is a normal space this is not an end of sentence space and if you want to force a uh, end of sentence punctuation but you have an abbreviation or some other uppercase letter at the end of the sentence uh, you can use backslash at in order to indicate this is actually the end of the sentence uh, you put the backslash at in front of the punctuation uh, that particular one I do very rarely but this and this I do quite frequently or you can say this is all a pile of nonsense and you want to switch off the entire um, mechanics for trying to follow these uh, rules of traditional English typesetting then you can just say I want French spacing and there will be no increased space at the end of a sentence and um, you don't have to worry about any of these rules.